Hi, I'm Ashling. I'm a poet and a performer, and I'm here to do a writing workshop for you today. This is part of a project called Voices Rising, and that's part of a programme called Walthamstow Garden Party in the Air. Voices Rising is a project that really wants to hear from you. It wants you to express yourself, to talk about what it's been like these last few months, of what you've been going through, how you've been feeling, what you've been thinking about the whole situation. And Walthamstow Garden Party is a festival that normally happens every year at Lloyd Park in Walthamstow. And I love it. I've been most years. There is music there, dancing, food, poetry, drumming, everything you could think of. And it can't happen physically this year, but it is going to happen virtually in some way. And if you would like to be part of that, then you can send in a video of you reading a piece of writing that you've created about this time, and you can send it in and be included. So somewhere on this page where you have found this video, there should be details about how you can do that. So please read that and do submit if you would like to, and if you create something that you're proud of. It's quite weird doing a workshop where I can't see anybody and where I can't hear the work that you'll be creating today. So I would love to hear some of that coming through on those videos. So what we need today is just a pen and some paper or a pencil if that's what you would prefer to write with. Um, I've got my notebook and I've got my purple pen, so I'm ready to go. And what we'll be doing today is a few different writing exercises to get you thinking, get you creating, get you putting some words down on that page. And we're going to start with a warm up. So it's good to warm up your brain when you are starting to write, just to get some words down on that page, to start thinking, for the words to start formulating, and not to think too much about it. Um, so, what I want you to do today is just enjoy yourself, have fun, relax, take it easy, um, and don't take it too seriously. So the exercise we're going to do to warm up is called a free write. That's something that I do quite a lot. Lots of writers use it as a tool to generate ideas and to get something down onto that blank page so it doesn't look as scary. So the rules of a free write... It's exactly what it sounds like. You just are going to write freely. So you put your pen on the paper and you do not take it off of the paper. So you just keep on moving. Even if you can't think of anything to write, that is what you write. I can't think of anything that now I'm thinking of and then just go somewhere. Take it anywhere you want to. It doesn't have to make sense. Just keep on writing. Keep getting something down on the page. Um, don't cross out, you can't make any mistakes, so don't worry, it is honestly just a way of creating. And we've got these two sides of our brain. We've got an editor um, that says, oh, that's wrong, or that's not quite right, or you could do better, or I don't like that word. And you've got the creation side, which is where all this fun, wacky stuff happens, where all the good stuff happens. Um, and you need both to help you when you're writing, um, the, but the editor should come in later in the process. The editor should not be here now. Um, it should not be holding you back. So we're just going to use that creative side in these free writes. So get your pen ready. Um, and I'm going to give you the start of a sentence, just a few words to start you off. And I want you to write that down on your page and then just continue with whatever comes into your head. You'll have a minute and then I'll give you another one and we'll do the same thing, okay? So first of all, I'm going to write with you. I want you to write, I am thinking about, so write that down on your page, I am thinking about, and then start writing. So there's no right and wrong, doesn't need to make sense, just write whatever comes to your mind.
keep it going, keep that pen flowing. more seconds left and next one is recently I noticed so move on now write that down recently I noticed and take it wherever you want to go Just 10 more seconds on this one. Give us those details of what you may have noticed. And we didn't get to. We didn't get to. Where does that take your mind? What did you not get to do? A few more seconds left on this one. I have been dreaming of. I have been dreaming of. Lots of people have been having some wacky dreams in lockdown. Have you had any weird dreams? Or is this you dreaming of something that you want to do maybe in the future? Take it whatever direction you want it to go to. Few more seconds on this one. We have run out of. We have run out of. So keep on writing. When you're writing here, you might be thinking of objects or physical things. So it could be we have run out of milk, we have run out of cereal, we have run out of toilet paper. Um, or it could be something more abstract, so it could be something you can't really touch or you can't really feel, so I, we have run out, um, yeah, we, we have run out of time or we have run out of patience, so wherever you want to take that, please do. Okay, and finally, this time has felt like, this time has felt like, and here you might want to bring in a simile, so can you compare this time to something, so for example, this time has felt like wading through a really large puddle, 
or um, this time has felt like being stuck in an elevator with no one being able to come and help us, um, can you get that simile in there? Can you compare it to something? This time has felt like taking a break on a bench in the middle of a walk. What can you compare it to? Okay, and stop there. I always find that that time actually goes really quickly and when you've got those other prompts to just go into, um, you end up, or well, I didn't even end up writing that much because it's, it kind of passes you by quite quickly even though your pen is keeping on moving. Um, so I hope that that got you started a little bit. Often in free writes, it brings up things you didn't even know that you were thinking about. Um, so it's kind of like your subconscious. And then, you know, for example, I've been dreaming of, you might not even have realised what it was that was in your mind, but suddenly it's on the page and you think, oh, where did that come from? Free writes can often surprise ourselves. And sometimes they are where the gem of an idea is because, you know, you most of what I've written does not make sense, to be honest. But then you might see one thing and go, oh, actually, yeah, I want to explore that more. I want to write about that for longer. Um, so I think it's a really good way and something you can use in the future if you'd like to of just getting yourself going and generating those ideas to start with. So I hope you're all warmed up now. Um, what we're going to do now is go on to another activity and first of all I want to share with you a little poem so this is from a larger poem, um, but it's just a little section of it. And as I read this poem, I want you to think about what is happening in the poem and about all of the details that the poet gives you. So what are you observing? What can you see in this poem? What are you learning from this poem? So it's Seamus Heaney's Clearances, and it's the third section. When all the others were away at mass, I was all hers as we peeled potatoes. They broke the silence, let fall one by one like solder weeping off the soldering iron. Cold comforts set between us, things to share gleaming in a bucket of clean water. And again, let fall, little pleasant splashes from each other's work would bring us to our senses. So while the parish priest at her bedside went hammer and tongs at the prayers for the dying, and some were responding and some crying, I remembered her head bent towards my head, her breath in mine, our fluent dipping knives, never closer the whole rest of our lives. I love that poem. It's quite a short section, but I think it packs so much into it. And you will have had your own thoughts on it as I was reading it, things that stuck with you, lines that stayed with you, words that stayed with you. And basically what Seamus Heaney is describing here is quite a simple activity of him peeling potatoes with his mother. And in doing that, he brings us into this really intimate moment where you can picture it. For me, and I don't know about you, but you'll have your own thoughts, I was stood watching them peeling these potatoes into this bucket. They were next to each other. It's this really intimate moment between a mother and a son um, that provides loads of information about their relationship together. Um, and the way that the poet has done this is through description. It's through describing in detail this moment to let us then make our own assumptions about what is going on and fill in the blanks. So, for example, and again, you'll have words and lines that stuck out to you, but I really loved little pleasant splashes. OK, um, that's so detailed. And just in that word choice, little pleasant splashes, it's telling you things, for example, maybe about the size of this potato. Um, I can kind of picture it then. It's, it's kind of smaller in 
their hands. Um, you know, it's not being dropped from massive height and kind of being lobbed and thrown into this bucket. It's being just dropped really nicely and politely and pleasantly into this bucket. Um, and that's just through three words that the poet has decided to use. Um, and it's that focus which provides this really rich and textured poem. So we're going to use that poem and those ideas of detail, of building textures, of describing what's happening to create our own descriptive poems about an activity that we have done. And we're going to do that in stages, okay? So first of all, what I want you to do is to make a list of all of the things that you have done in lockdown. So we'll all have slightly different experiences. Some of us might have been able to go outside for daily exercise and go for walks. Some people won't have been able to leave the home. That's absolutely fine. Um, just go from a personal experience from you. So it could be shopping in Sainsbury's. It could be I know lots of people have been baking cakes um, or cooking a meal maybe with somebody. Um, it could be listening to a song. Um, anything that you have done in this period. I want you to make a list. So start jotting those down. I'm only going to give you um, a minute for that. So just jot down all of these things that you have done over this period. And you might want to write down who you've done it with. If you were doing it with someone, you might be doing it on your own. It could be kind of a new experience. So some people have been doing exercise videos at home or workout videos. I know some people have been planting seeds in the garden to watch grow. Um, so it doesn't matter what it is, just something that you've done over lockdown that you have maybe enjoyed. And your time's up. Um, okay, so hopefully you've got a nice little list now of a few different things. Um, and what I want you to do now is to look at that list and I want you to choose one of those activities, okay? So um, don't think too much about it. Normally, if you just go with your gut and your instinct, it's probably going to be right. Um, but if you try and think of the one that you might have most to write about, so maybe the one that you can remember clearest or that you could be something that you really enjoyed doing, um, select that one that you feel like you have the most to write about and the most to say about. And once you've done that, <clears throat> this activity is going to become the title of the poem that we're going to go on to write. So in the poem that I read to you, for example, in this activity, if we were doing that, the poem would be called Peeling Potatoes or Peeling Potatoes with my mum. So it's just looking at what the activity is um, and writing that down. So make that in your head now, the title, what it will go on to be. Um, so again, it could be listening to music, dancing in the kitchen, shopping in Sainsbury's, ringing grandma, just whatever the activity is. <clears throat> and then... We're going to make some notes now. So whatever works for you visually on the page, you might want to write your title at the top of the page um, and then do bullet points. You might want to write it right in the middle and do kind of a spider diagram around, whatever you prefer. But I want you somewhere on your page to write down that title of your poem and the, that is the activity that you have done. Okay. I've written it down in the middle, so I'm just drawing my bubble around it. 
Um, okay, and I'm going to give you a few minutes now, and what I want you to do is to jot down, so as I say, bullet points, words, one word, two words, a little phrase, but no more than that. We're not writing full sentences. We're not trying to create a poem. Um, at the moment, we're just writing notes and ideas, okay? So I want you to look at your title and write down as many details as you can think of or remember from the activity that you've done, okay? So start now, go for it. And you might want to think of those adjectives to describe the activity. You might want to think about what you can see. Um, so it's going to be different for all of us. Um, but is there something to do with size? Um, so for example, and just keep on writing your own notes as I'm speaking. Um, for example, if you're cooking, you might want to write about the size of the pot, so big pot, or if you used, I don't know, a red pot when you were cooking, red pot, okay, so you could use colours. It's really useful for this to use your senses, so we might want to think about when you were doing this activity, what sounds could you hear? So was it birds outside your window? Was it the sound of another person talking to you, perhaps if you'd rang somebody? What could you hear around you? If you were with somebody, then you can maybe write that down, have that detail there. Smell is always a really powerful sense to think about. Um, so were there any specific smells? Um, so, you know, was it, were there flowers? Fresh grass? What could you feel? Um, so it could be kind of the weather. Um, were you hot? Did you feel a blanket? And then how did you feel? So when you're doing this activity, think back, really think back and picture it in your head. Go back there. And were you happy? Were you surprised? Were you relaxed what feelings did you have whilst doing it and it could it, your feelings could change throughout the activity it could have been different at the start and at the end um, so you could have done some exercise and felt awful and tired at the beginning and then you could have felt really happy at the end and happy that you've done it so kind of get some of those feelings down as well Anything about your place where you were? So if you're at home, what room are you in? Are you in the kitchen? Are you in the front room? Um, if you're outside, then, you know, what road were you on? Um, if you're in a park, what's the name of that park? Be really specific if you want to be. Taste. So again, you know, if you're if you're cooking something, you might want to put some of the ingredients that you use. That will tie into smell, I'm sure, as well. Um, but it could also be about taste. And 
And again, like think back to the poem that we read together. Um, all of those little details of the, the clean bucket that was in that poem, um, their heads being close together, those images, um, that isolation of them being together whilst everyone else is out of the house. Think about those kind of details and think about how you can add that just to this list that you're creating. Um, so time of day it might be a nice one to think about. So, you know, what time is this happening? Is it light outside? Is it dark? Um, all of those details, anything you can think of. And just a few more seconds now. So just finishing up um, with anything else that comes to mind or anything else that you haven't yet been able to jot down. Get that down on that page. And then you can all wrap up. Okay. Okay, so mine's very messy, but it's kind of um, a little diagram with the title in the middle and then really random things. So I've got, um, so my activity um, was having a socially distant picnic. Um, that was with my mum and we sat far away from each other on the grass outside. So I've got things like beaming sun because it was really, really hot that day. I've got strawberries, I've got mum, I've got afternoon um happy um and so what you've got now is you've already got a title for your poem um and you've got all of these details that could fit somewhere into this poem okay so um your task now is to assemble the details that you already have into a poem so write again now somewhere different but at the top of your page or somewhere on your page um, write your title again so mine would be having a socially distant picnic so write that somewhere on your page and the way that we're going to do this is that you're going to write about the activity that you did so you're going to lead the reader or the listener in your poem through from the start of your activity all the way to the end of your activity. And in that middle section, all you're doing is filling in those details, but making them full sentences. So for example, if you've written going for a walk um, and you've written pink tree, okay? Okay, that's great. So what you might wanna do is start your poem by writing an action to begin the activity. So, for example, if it's going for a walk and um, pink tree, I might write, I stepped outside of my front door for the first time that day. I looked up and I saw a magnificent, large tree with pink blossoms. I stepped forward, I stood under it, and the blossoms fell on me like confetti. They smelt like skittles. They smelt like roses. Um, and so all you've done there is taken one of the things on your diagram of those details that you have at your fingertips and you've just expanded it and written a couple of sentences about it. It could be one sentence, you might have more to say, it could be a couple of sentences. Um, and again, you know, we're thinking about all those things that you wrote down about those senses, about what we can hear, um, what we can see. That's what makes poetry, those kind of um, details is what makes poetry so vivid and beautiful when you read it and you feel like you're experiencing it and like you're there, okay? So you've got your title, you can begin by writing a sentence which is an action to get us into the activity. And then just start to take some of these details and expand upon them. Write one sentence or a few sentences about them.
Again, be clear and be specific in what you're saying. Think of those observations. Um, did you see anybody in your activity? If you were outside, for example, um, did you have any interactions with people? So remember that you're deciding the world of your poem. You are the creator. So you're in charge. So there might be some things on that list that you think, oh, they don't actually need to know that. The reader or the listener doesn't need to know that that happened. I'm going to leave that out. But actually this, oh yeah, the, the fact those beaming sun, okay, no, definitely I want them to know that. I want them to feel that. So I'm going to, all right, my next line is going to be about the heat of the sun on my skin. So you are selecting what should be in your poem and what you can leave out. You're selecting what to tell us. Okay, and then remember the, the task of this poem is also to lead us through this activity. Um, so we want this beginning, middle of what's happening in your activity, and then we want a close and a resolution, so an ending. Um, so wherever you are now, you might want to start thinking about that last part of the poem, um, that last bit of the middle into the end. So how are you going to start closing this? Look again at your... Um, your notes and your list of details and think where would be a nice place to end so I can already see one all right that's where I want to end um, so maybe start writing about that now to close to finish how what's going to be the lasting image or impact um, of your poem what's going to be that last thing that you leave the reader with so remember the poem that we read, it was them never have been, never having been as close um, all of their lives than in that moment. Um, so what are you going to leave the reader on? And just um, a few more seconds now to close that up, so bring that to an end. Okay. That's the problem when I write along, I don't want to stop writing, so um, I, I give too much time. Um, okay, and so now wrap up. Okay. 
And so there you should have um, a poem with a title that goes through an activity and describes it in detail using senses, using detail, using everything around us. Um, so I really hope that you like what you've created. Uh, if you want more time on it, please do go away and work on it. Um, mine is definitely not finished, but I really like the idea. Um, so I, yeah, I wrote about having a socially distant picnic with my mum. Um, and so, for example, some of the lines that I like. So do that now, read over yours and think, oh yeah, I really like that line. Um, but some of the lines I like in mine... Um, the sun is beaming, my makeup is rubbing off, you could fry an egg on the top of my head. Okay, so that's how hot it was. Um, and then my ending moment, and again, I don't, I think I need more time on this, I haven't captured it properly of what I want to say. Um, but, but the image that I want to end on is, um, we leave the park, keep our party hats on, do not mind when people on the street stare, we laugh, they do not know the party, we have just had a reunion, it's been so long. So it's not quite right yet, it's not quite there, um, but it's something about this image of leaving the park with my mum and we've both got our party hats on. Um, so that's kind of my resolution and you'll each have your own one. Um, oh, I wish I could hear some of yours, I really, really do. I really do. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, Okay, so our final activity today then um, is another writing exercise and we've kind of, this has been such a strange time for all of us, you know, it's new for all of us, we're all going through this and we've all been affected in different ways at some point or another um, and a lot of the time when something happens you know, we're on to the next thing and it's like we're really busy and we're doing things and we've got loads of things that we have to do. Um, so we don't really have time to reflect on things. But, you know, now at this time, we, we do have a bit more of that time. Um, and so what I wanted us to do was look forward a little bit um, to remind us of this time um, so that we don't forget it. Uh, so what I want us to do is to write a letter to our future selves. So this is writing a letter to your future self. And thinking about what you want to say to your future self, what you want to say about this time now, about how you've been, um, about what you've experienced, those little things that you don't want to forget about this time, um, and what you want to remember. Uh, so I thought that um, I would read out a letter that I've written to my future self just to give you an idea of what it could look like um and you know you're all being lovely writing with me today and getting things down on this pa paper um so yeah I just wanted to kind of share a bit of myself as well um so this is my letter to my future self dear Ashling. I know you are somewhere brighter now. The current moment I write to you from feels as distant as a faded scar. You enter the seaside like you said you would when you were on your walk and couldn't stop thinking of fish and chips. You swore you smelt the sea when you stepped outside your front door mid-May. Remember when your niece FaceTimed and she looked so happy and cared for, couldn't believe her luck having her mum and dad around her all the time. Don't forget when you heard loud singing from your garden and you both went to investigate and stumbled upon two singers doing a gig in their driveway and you stood socially distant from other neighbours you'd never seen before and you smiled at them as if somehow after all of this you knew exactly who they were. You are missing the days of no commutes, the quiet walks around the roads you had not walked along before despite their closeness to your door. You are missing not having anything to prepare for, not having that Sunday night feeling in your chest as you pack your bag for school the next day, which never really goes away, no matter your age. 
You have forgotten most of the answers to the numerous Zoom quizzes you did, but you remember doing them. How important friends and family were in this time of absence and lack, this time of distance and impermanence. What have you taken from all of this? You still try to call your family more frequently. Make it a ritual. They are all we have when the world turns to chaos around us. You felt the reality of that. And though you couldn't get the train to see them, and felt how far around London you had scattered, like spokes on a bicycle wheel, you felt more connected to the centre than ever. You learnt how to slow your body down, not to make everything a stop-off point to the next destination. You had to come to a standstill, however uncomfortable it was to stop moving. Remember this moment of calm, in amongst the fear of it all, when you are running faster than your feet can keep up with, remember to breathe in. Remember that when the world as we knew it ground to a halt, you still existed. It kept turning. Nothing is as dramatic or unmanageable as it seems. Retreat into the silence when necessary. We've been through worse than this. Okay. So that is my letter to my future self. Um, and you can do this however way you want. Um, but similar, similarly to the free write that we did at the start of this session, um, if you want to follow the little model that I have for you, then please do. Um, so I'll kind of give you some sentence starters that you can write from. Um, but if you want to take it in a completely different direction, then again, feel free to. It's completely up to you. It's a letter to your future self. So it's whatever you want to say. OK. So if you want to start it with dear and then your name. You might want to start with, I know you are. I know you are. You might want to say something that your future self has done or somewhere that your future self has gone after lockdown. So remember, this is in the future. This is when we're not all stuck at home anymore um, and the world starts to look a little bit more like it did before. Um, so is there something that your future self has now done um, or somewhere that they have gone that you want to include in this letter? You might want to say, remember when, and this could be a moment from lockdown, so a moment from your experience, remember when something happened, is there anything that you, you want to remember, something that made you laugh in this time, perhaps, something that you really enjoyed about this time, that you want to take with you that you want your future self to remember.
you are, no, sorry, um, don't forget, don't forget. So this is something you don't want future you to forget about this time. So this is nice, I've, I've just thought of something um, that I'm writing down and it's made me smile instantly just thinking about it, um, which feels quite nice. I want to laugh. Um, you are missing so what is your future self missing from this time so it might be that it was quieter that you were able to spend more time with um, your loved ones or the people that you live with and you're not able to do that as much in the future so what are you missing in the future from this time. just the delivery of his mum. What have you taken from all of this? So that's a question. What do you want to take away from this experience? You learnt, you learnt. So this could be a new skill that you've learnt in lockdown. This could be something that you haven't done before that you started doing. It could be something that you've learnt about yourself. You might have learnt that you're actually a lot stronger than you thought you were. What have you learned?
And then if there's anything else that you want to remember, so you could use that word remember again. And if there's kind of any anything final that you want to say to yourself, your future self, who is somewhere having a great time, looking back on this. Do you want to say that you're proud of how you've handled it? Anything nice that you want to add, be nice to your future self. Say something nice. We don't say nice things to ourselves enough. Okay, and start drawing to a close now. So finishing off those thoughts, finishing off those ideas. If there's anything left unsaid, now's your time. And um, then just decide a way to sign your letter off. So I didn't even, the one that I read out, I didn't even sign it off really. Um, so, you know, it can just be the end of a, of a line, um, a thought, or if you want to, you can sign it off in the traditional way that a letter would be. So you could have um, lots of well, lots of love or um, yours sincerely, however you want to sign off your letter to yourself. And then you could finish it off with your name or a nickname. Up to you. Okay, once you've done that, you now have a letter to your future self. Uh, so what I would urge you to do, if you can, and if you're kind of in a space where it feels comfortable to, um, and if it feels comfortable for you, I would urge you to read your letter out loud to yourself. Because I think there's something that happens and it feels quite different when you read it out loud, you hear those words, um, there's just something that happens when it's said out loud as opposed to just seeing it on the page. So if you can, then please do read your letter out loud to yourself. Um, and also this is something that you can return to. So you can put it in a box, you can um, return to it again in a couple of months or in six months time or whenever it is that you want to look at it to remind yourself to check in with yourself. Um, it's a really nice thing to return to. Uh, and also you can do this activity again and again. I just did it again um, with you and I've got different things and you know, you're always going to be a different person the next day when you write it. Um, so it's something that you can just return to whenever you want to. So that brings us to the end of our time together. I've had a really nice time. I hope that you have. I hope you've got something useful out of it and some nice writing and you've used it as a time to just kind of connect with yourself in amongst all of this noise. Um, I would really love to hear some of them. So please do take a look and look at how you can submit your videos. And look after yourself, have a lovely day, have a lovely week, have a lovely evening. Um, thanks for spending this time with me.